welcome to virtual classroom our today's topic is cardiac arrhythmia first of all we'll describe the conduction tissue of the heart and its pacemaker activity you know that the conduction tissue consists of the sinoatrial node connected by internodal fibers to the av node and from this av node the bundle of his arises and it divides into two branches the left and the right uh, bundle branch the left bundle branch has anterior and posterior fasciculi and these ultimately divides into parkinsi fibers and connects with the ventricular muscle the intrinsic rate of rhythm produced by the SN node is 6200 beats per minute and in the AV node it is 40 to 55 per minute in the bundle of his bundle branches or Parkinson fiber it is 25 to 40 beats per minute this is the normal ECG tracing we know there are 12 leads in the normal 12 lead ECG tracing and we have the standard leads like lead 1, 2, 3 and we have augmented leads like AVR, AVL, AVF, and the chest leads V1, V2, V3, V4, V5, V6. And we have also a rhythm strip in which we also actually record the lead to, to see the rhythm of the heart. So uh, in the ECG, we find, uh, we determine the axis of the ECG by uh, from the recording of the ECG and we put on the axis of different leads into this figure and ultimately determine the resultant axis of the ECG. And in the normal ECG, we have the following tracings like the POF, QRS complex and the TOF. The POF of duration is uh, around uh, it, it actually, it, uh, duration is 0 0.06 to 0 0.12 second. And PR interval we measure from the beginning of the P wave to starting of the Q wave. So this is called PR interval. And the PR interval uh, duration is 0 0.012 to 0.20 second. And that Q, QRS complex is starting from the Q to the end of the S OF is called Q QRS complex. Its uh, duration is 0.06 to 0.16 second. This is the ST segment. Its duration is 0.08 to 0.12 second. And this is the TOF. TOF, its amplitude is 0.5 millimeter in the limb rate. And duration is 0.1 to 0.25 second. QT interval from the starting point of the Q to the end of the TOF is the QT interval, its duration is 0 0.36 to 0 0.44 second. So during interpretation of the ECG, we should follow a systemic method of interpretation. This, first of all, we'll determine the heart rate and the rhythm, then the PR interval in the segment, then QT interval, then we'll look after the POF, the QRS complex, ST segment, and TOF, and presence of e wave and then we will calculate the electrical axis of the P QRS complex and T wave. Actually, the QRS axis is the real axis of the on the ECG. Now, what is cardiac arrhythmia? A cardiac arrhythmia is any abnormal heart rate or rhythm. A normal adult, the heart beat regularly at 60 to 100 beat per minute. Tachycardia at first heart rhythm with a rate more than 100 beats per minute. A first heart rate uh, rhythm with a rate more than 100 beats per minute is called tachycardia. And bradycardia, a slow heart rate uh, below 60 beats per minute is called bradycardia. There are two, basically two types of arrhythmia. One is supraventricular arrhythmia, another is ventricular arrhythmia. Supraventricular arrhythmia, when the arrhythmia begins in the atria. Ventricular arrhythmia, when the arrhythmia begins in the ventricle. There are bradyarrhythmia, 
slow heart rate rhythm that may be caused by disease in the heart conduction system such as SA node, AV node, or his Parkinson network. Bradyarrhythmia types. The respiratory sinus arrhythmia, it is physiological, particularly in the young patient, and it is due to minor changes in the RR interval during respiration, reduction during inspiration, and increase during expiration. Sinus body pradia, physiological, particularly in the athletes, it is due to, it may be due to sick sinus syndrome, that is sinus dysfunction, or maybe due to a lot of other factors, including beta blockers, calcium channel blockers, and some endocrine condition like uh, hypothyroidism. Here, the rate is less than 60 beats per minute, normal PO before every QRS complex is present in the ECG dressing. Sinoatrial pause or arrests may occur in healthy individual, underlying cardiovascular disease, for example, six sinus syndrome may give rise to this also, Transient absence of PO occurs. Tachycardia, bradycardia syndrome. Here, the abnormal supraventricular impulse generation and conduction. This is the typical six sinus syndrome. Here, there is intermittent tachyarrhythmia and bradyarrhythmia. Bradyarrhythmia of atrioventricular block. Atrioventricular block may be first degree, second degree, and third degree block. In the first degree block, there is physiological response, it may be, or increased vagal tone may be responsible cause. Drugs like beta blocker or calcium channel blocker may be responsible for fast degree heart block. Here the PR interval is prolonged, it is more than 200 milliseconds. Second degree block, uh, it may be due to decoxin toxicity, beta blocker, calcium channel blocker, or increased vagal tone due to any cause. Sinoatrial conduction disease may give rise to this. Right coronary infarction may give rise to this. It's sub two type, Mobis type one and Mobis type two. Mobis type one is also called as in Quebec phenomenon. Here the progressive lengthening of the PR interval occurs until a beat is dropped. In Mobis type two, irregular drop beat and uh, due to a two is to one or three is to one conduction into the to the AV node. In third degree heart block, there is complete block, no communication between the atria and ventricle occurs. Complete AV dissociation is there, no relationship between the POFs and QRS complex on which is addressing. There are supraventricular tachycardia, it has been the classification has been renewed, and according to European Society of Cardiologists, 2019. Uh, the classifications are like this. Atrial tachycardia, it may be sinus tachycardia. And the sinus cardia, tachycardia may be physiological sinus tachycardia, inappropriate sinus tachycardia, sinus nodal re-entrant tachycardia. We'll talk about the re-entry mechanism later on. And the focus may be in the atrium, like focal atrial tachycardia, multifocal atrial tachycardia, macro re-entry atrial tachycardia. And this site, macro reentry site, may be in the cabotricuspid area or non cabotricuspid area, like right atrium or left atrium itself. AV junctional tachycardia may be present, and here in the problem is in the junctional tissue. AV nodal reentrant tachycardia, uh, it may be typical or atypical presentation. Non reent junctional tachycardia, like junctional ectopic or Focal junctional tachycardia, other non reentrant variants may be present. Atrioventricular reentrant tachycardia, here the problem is on the AV node, not in the junctional tissue, AV node itself. It may be orthrodomic due to forward conduction problem, or it may be antidomic where the uh, retrograde conduction is uh, at problem. So initially in the we used to classify uh, the, depending upon the QRS complex wide into supraventricular and ventricular tachycardia. In supraventricular tachycardia, the QRS complex was normal, but in ventricular tachycardia, the QRS complex is usually wide. But this type of uh, differentiation is no longer tenable. So uh, narrow QRS complex may be due to a lot of other causes. So 
if it is the qrs complex is regular then it may be due to physiological sinus tachycardia inappropriate sinus tachycardia esenodal reentrant tachycardia ocolateral tachycardia atrial flutter with fixed ab conduction avinodal reentry tachycardia junctional uh, non reentrant variants orthodromic avrt that is atrioventricular reentrant tachycardia idiopathic ventricular tachycardia so ventricular tachycardia may also give rise to narrow qrs complex and the rhythm may be irregular in case of atrial fibrillation but the qrs complex is narrow focal atrial tachycardia atrial flutter with varying degree of av block varying whenever there is varying degree of av block the heart rate ultimately it becomes uh, irregular there may be multiple atrial tachycardia this give rise to irregular heartbeat also white qrs complex may be present when the uh, pulse is regular in that case it may be due to ventricular tachycardia or flutter ventricular pest rhythm antidromic avrt supraventricular tachycardia with aberration atrial or junctional tachycardia with pre excitation supraventricular tachycardia with qrs widening due to electrolyte disturbance this may overlap so there may be qrs widening or due to some antiarrhythmic drug the qrs may be widened irregular uh, rhythm occurs with white qrs complex in case of atrial fibrillation atrial flutter or focal atrial tachycardia with varying block uh, pre excited atrial uh, fibrillation polymorphic vt tosade the pointy ventricular fibrillation etc ventricular tachycardia is classified according to morphology into monomorphic vt and polymorphic vt there are other variants like torsades de pointy right ventricular outflow tract tachycardia fascicular tachycardia bidirectional ventricular tachycardia there may be ventricular flutter or ventricular fibrillation and according to duration it may be sustained or non sustained when the duration is more than 30 seconds it is called sustained ventricular tachycardia when the duration is less than 3 or uh, when the duration is less than 30 seconds in 3 or more consecutive ventricular complexes then it is called non sustained ventricular tachycardia clinical presentation the hemodynamic effect may be stable the patient may be hemodynamically stable or the patient may be hemodynamically unstable like uh, present with hypotension chest pain cardiac failure or decreased consciousness level presentation of the arrhythmia it varies it may be asymptomatic a fluttering sensation in the chest may be present a racing heartbeat that is tachycardia a slow heartbeat or bradycardia chest pain may be present shortness of breath light headedness dizziness fainting syncope or near syncope near fainting fatigue heart failure thromboembolic manifestation may be there what are the common tests we usually do for diagnosis of arrhythmia uh, 12 period ecg it is the first and foremost investigation there are others like halter monitoring trans telephonic monitoring we can do in in uh, using electronic devices treadmill testing may be done tip table testing may be done electrophysiological study et study esophageal et study echocardiogram myocardial perfusion scan and sometimes when the uh, arrhythmia is very uncommon then we can use an implantable loop recorder to record the arrhythmia event uh, for a long duration of treatment for example it may be due for example it may be 6 month or more in that case we can use a loop recorder mechanism of cardiac arrhythmia uh, it may be disorder it may be due to disorder of impulse formation or disorder of impulse conduction in disorder of impulse formation it may be defect in the automaticity or altered normal automaticity abnormal automaticity or triggered activity uh, from anywhere and the mechanism is delayed after depolarization or early after depolarization we know in the in the in the action potential tracing of the heart muscle uh, in the uh, phase 2 3 and 4 this is called repolarization phase if there is depolarization early in this phase then it is called early after depolarization if there is depolarization late in this phase it is called 
delayed after depolarization, it may give rise to cardiac arrhythmia. Disorders of impulse conduction, for example, due to re-entry, and this re-entry may be an anatomic re-entry or functional re-entry. Re-entry phenomenon, this anatomic re-entry or functional re-entry may be there, and it may lead to anisotropic re-entry, figure of eight, the re-entry circuit may be figure of eight, like figure of eight, or a spiral re-entry may be there. The, for re-entry to occur, there are several conditions to be fulfilled. A substrate must be present, that is the presence of joint myocardial tissue with different electrophysiological property like conduction and refractoriness. We know that the cardiac muscles are branched and it is connected to each other by intercalated disc. And the atrium acts as a syncytium and the ventricle acts as a syncytium. And these are separated by the fibrous trigone, which insulates the atrium from the ventricle, except through one connection, which is normally present is the bundle of his. And another abnormal connection may be there, that is the bundle of Kent. And uh, so to produce a re-entry circuit, circuit, either anatomical re-entry, and which may be global or local, a substrate having different electrophysiological properties must be there, which prevents the normal conduction through this tissue. And due to very refractoriness, this also prevents the conduction through it. As a result, the action potential bypasses this area and produces re-entry circuit. We'll explain it later on. So an area of block must be there, anatomical or functional or both, an area of inaccessible tissue. What is the block? An area of inaccessible tissue around which the waveform can circulate, around which the waveform can circulate. A unidirectional conduction block may be there, a path of slowed conduction that allows sufficient delay in the conduction of the circulating waveform to enable the recovery of the refractory tissue proximal to the site of unidirectional block. We'll explain it. A critical tissue mass to sustain the uh, circulating reentrant waveform must be there. If the mass or the substrate is very small in size, in that case, reentry will not occur. And uh, an initiating trigger phenomenon must be there. So it, this re-entry may be macro re-entry or micro re-entry. Re in macro re-entry, a large portion of the mass is included in micro re-entry, cell to cell, or even two or three cells or adjacent cells may be responsible for re-entry circuit. So global re-entry and local re-entry. To re-entry to occur, it needs unidirectional block, altered conduction velocity, altered refractory period, and abnormal connection. This is an, a figure, a cartoon showing the global reentry. We know from the SNO, the uh, impulse is conducted to the AV node. This is the normal pathway. So if there is a local reentry anywhere close to this pathway, from this re-entry circuit, the, because of here, it is the antitomic conduction, counterclockwise, a impulse may be, an impulse may be produced, which may connect with the pathway and ultimately stimulates the AV node. So the normal impulse from the SN node and the abnormal impulse from the local re-entry re -entry circuit stimulates the AV node and it gives rise to uh, arrhythmia. Similarly, if there is an accessory bundle of paint bypass tract it is there. From the SA node, it is normally conducted to the AV node, but from the SA node through the bypass tract, it is again conducted here. So both these two together can produce the cardiac arrhythmia. In this case, here is the um, local re-entry phenomenon. We know when a conduction tissue is branched into two portion, the action potential is conducted through this pathway and through the other pathway, pathway one and pathway two. If there is pathway three connecting between these three, between one and two, then the conduction from the 
pathway one or pathway two meets in the th three level and actually cancel out each other. But if there is problem in the conduction in the pathway two, that it prevents the antidromic, uh, sorry, orthodromic conduction through this uh, pathway, then the pathway through the one will be activated and the uh, orthodromic conduction through the pathway three will go to the pathway two because this is one unidirectional flow. So retrograde way it can flow and can meet the pathway one and both will be transmitted to the uh, distal portion ultimately causing re-entry. So there will be cardiac arrhythmia. Causes of arrhythmia. Risk factors and causes of heart arrhythmia include heart disease, electrolyte imbalance uh, in your blood or structural abnormalities of the heart, infection, uh, abnormal electric pathway and medication. All this can produce the uh, arrhythmia. Treatment option for arrhythmia. What are the treatment options? First of all, in a very emergency situation, we can use the vagal maneuver to uh, treat the arrhythmia, to stop the arrhythmia. For example, in case of paroxysmal supraventricular arrhythmia, uh, we can stop it. Even in case of some ventricular arrhythmia, ventricular tachycardia, for example, we can stop it by carotid masses. Here, the vagal stimulation goes upwards to the center, and from there, downwards impulse comes, and ultimately, vagal influence is increased which can slow down the heart rate and bring it back to the rhythm. Correction of electrolyte imbalance may correct the arrhythmia. So we'll have to stop all arrhythmogenic drugs, which may be the underlying cause. Medication may be used, antiarrhythmic drugs may be used to treat the arrhythmia. Sometimes cardioversion and defibrillation is used. In cardioversion, it's a synchronized method in which we use low intensity current to stop the arrhythmia in defibrillation, we use a high intensity current uh, to stop the heart action potential altogether. Later on, the heart muscle, uh, including the uh, conduction tissue, regains its rhythm. And as the SNO node has the increased leakiness to sodium ion, it responds, the, uh, responds fast and ultimately takes control of the pacemaker activity of the heart. So ultimately, it goes back to the sinus rhythm. We can ablate the arrhythmogenic focus by catheter uh, using the radio frequency, cryo, and other energy device to ablate those areas. And not only that, to get a long-term result for arrhythmia control, we'll have to modify the lifestyle. For example, smoking should be prohibited caffeine, excessive consumption of caffeine, alcohol, etc. should be avoided and uh, correction of all the predisposing diseases that leads to this type of underlying pathology. For example, coronary heart disease, we will have to control the diabetes, hypertension, etc. Uh, to decrease the risk factor. Sometimes you need to implant a permanent pacemaker uh, or implantable cardioverter or defibrillator ICD uh, needs to be placed and sometimes without surgical treatment, we cannot treat it. For example, maze procedure may be necessary. CAP is coronary bypass grafting to correct the ischemia. And sometimes aneurysm mectomy may be needed to correct the arrhythmogenic focus. Antiarrhythmic drugs are used to decrease or increase the conduction velocity and alter the excitability of cardiac cell by changing the duration of the effective refractory period. So we are working on the, the antiarrhythmic drugs are working on the conduction velocity and the refractory period. And also it can suppress abnormal ectopic or automatic focus so that the ectopic focus cannot come into play and ultimately the arrhythmia is stopped. Antiarrhythmic drugs has been classified classically by Vaughan and Williams from 1960 into several groups. In 2018, a new classification system, which includes the Vaughan-Williams classification, 
along with that some other class of drugs are added together so this new classification will be discussed here so in case of class 1 we know that the, these are sodium channel blockers it may be of three types 1a 1b and 1c type 1a is quinidine procainamide 1b is lignocaine and phenytoin 1c is flecainide class 2 is the beta blockers uh, it includes the carbidolol betoprolol bisoprolol etc class 3 is the potassium channel blocker amiodarone is the uh, good example of this type of drug class 4 is the calcium channel blocker here the verapamil dtsms are used there is a miscellaneous group that is uh, it includes the adenosine electrolyte supplement like magnesium and potassium supplement digitalis compound like cardiac glycosides atropine which is a muscarinic receptor antagonist which may also act as antiarrhythmic so in the uh, recent classification also called the oxford classifications other group of drugs are included in class 0 ions and uh, involved in automaticity these drugs acts upon this ion channel involved in automaticity in class 5 there are mechanically sensitive ion channel upon which uh, these drugs act in class 6 connection controlling electronic electrotonic cell coupling these drugs upon uh, act upon this uh, side in class 7 molecules underlying longer term signaling processes so it's for the chronic treatment of the uh, arrhythmia these drugs are used depending upon the situation the drug work of choice will vary for example in case of sinus tachycardia either class 2 or class 4 drug in case of atrial fibrillation or flutter class 1 c a 1 c 2 3 4 its digitalis may be used so depending upon the situation we'll have to charge on individual basis and at the underlying type of arrhythmia we'll have to select the drug so we'll uh, talk a little bit in detail about the atrial fibrillation there are certain predisposing factors which leads to atrial fibrillation it's a very common uh, arrhythmia usually en encountered in older age male gender are more vulnerable to uh, atrial fibrillation than the female gender and the Caucasian ethnicity are more vulnerable. There are a lot of comorbidities which can be disposed to uh, like hypertension, obstructive sleep apnea, pulmonary hypertension, COPD, congestive heart failure, ischemic heart disease, structural or valvular heart disease and diabetes mellitus. So if there is history of arrhythmia prior to surgery, there is more chance that the atrial fibrillation will recur. Prior to documentation of atrial fibrillation if there is such a history, there is more chance that the atrial fibrillation will recur. So whenever uh, there is sudden stoppage of beta blocker or the arrhythmic agent or withdrawal from some substances like alcohol, benzodiazepine and cocaine, there is more chance that the atrial fibrillation will occur. Whenever there is hyperparathyroidism that will lead to uh, atrial fibrillation, Uncontrolled pain may lead to electrolyte imbalance like hypokalemia, hypomagnesemia, hypoxia, hypotension, hypovolemia, dehydration, hypothermia, or severe anemia, acute heart failure. This all predisposes to atrial fibrillation. There are some surgery related risk factors. Uh, for example, uh, incidence is much more in uh, cardiovascular and thoracic surgery than the abdominal or orthopedic surgery. Emergency surgery, uh, here there is more chance of developing atrial fibrillation. Surgery for advanced malignant lung cancer, it has more potentiality of developing atrial fibrillation. Prolonged duration of surgery or surgical complication or postoperative blood transfusion uh, due to excessive blood loss may lead to this type of atrial fibrillation. So in atrial fibrillation, we see that the RR intervals are irregular and the POF is replaced by the fibrillatory OF. In atrial fetter, the RR intervals are usually regular if there is no variable AV block and the uh, POF is replaced by the flutter OF or sawtooth appearance. In multifocal atrial tachycardia, here the uh, heart rate is irregular, that is the pulse is irregular and here 
the POA previous uh, actually precedes the QRS complex, but the duration is variable. So different types of PR interval will be there. And the POA configuration is also different in different QRS complexes. So it may be different shaped, it may be flat, it may be wide, it may be wide end, etc. in different QRS complex. In AP NRT, where there is uh, atrioventricular uh, uh, non reentry tachycardia, when a reentrant circuit is present within the uh, within the AV node itself, so AV nodal reentry tachycardia. In this situation, there are two separate conduction pathways instead of just one. And this complex will give rise to POA following QRS complex. Everywhere there is a POA following QRS complex. And may one may precede, another may be following the QRS complex. So because there are two pathways, two separate conduction pathways. Atrial fibrillation treatment option summary. So the main target is rate control, rhythm control, and prevention of a coagulation uh, complication that is thromboembolic complication of atrial fibrillation. Rate control we can do it by beta blocker, digoxin or calcium channel blocker or AV nodal ablation or pacemaker sometimes we can use. And anticoagulation is necessary for all patients with respect to score stroke. And rhythm control we can control it by anti-arrhythmic anti drugs like uh, uh, like Krakenite, Sotalol, Amiodarone, uh, etc. This type of drug, Quinidine, this type of drug may be helpful. Sometimes you need to ablate it by catheter ablation. Uh, for uh, example, in case of left heart chamber, we usually ablate uh, all around the pulmonary vein and also ablate the area between the mitral valve and the pulmonary vein. In complete uh, ablation technique, we ablate both the right atrium and the left atrium and ablate the, in and around the superior vena cava and also the inferior vena cava. Sometimes atrial defibrillator may be used, but it is not usually required. And surgery like maze procedure, it may be cut and sieve method, it may be ablation by uh, cryoablation or radio frequency ablation, we can use this type of mesh procedure to bring it back to the normal rhythm. Anticoagulations are necessary for all patients with risk factors for stroke. Now we'll talk about the ventricular tachycardia. Ventricular tachycardia are of several types. These are the dressings. For example, this is the trossardis D20 here. The alternate, alternate, no, a bout of gradually increasing size of ventricular complex, then decreasing complex. If we uh, if we draw a line on the upper margin of this rhythm and uh, draw another line in the lower margins of this rhythm, we see it is a spiral shape. So this is called trossardis de pointy and we have ventricular tachycardia where it may be regular or pulseless ventricular tachycardia may be present. And in case of ventricular fibrillation, it gives irregular bizarre wave pattern. And torsity the pointy may lead to ventricular fibrillation also. And there may be complete asystole, ventricular asystole. So we see that the ventricular tachycardia may be monomorphic ventricular tachycardia or polymorphic ventricular tachycardia. Polymorphic ventricular tachycardia is a form of ventricular tachycardia in which there are multiple ventricular foci with resultant QRS complex varying in amplitude, axis, and duration. The commonest cause of uh, polymorphic ventricular tachycardia is myocardial ischemia. Trosades de pointy is a specific form of polymorphic ventricular tachycardia occurring in the context of QT prolongation. It has a characteristic morphology in which the QRS complexes twist around the isoelectric line. 
for the sensitive point to be diagnosed, the patient has to have evidence of both polymorphic ventricular tachycardia and QT prolongation. Bidirectional VT is another type of polymorphic ventricular tachycardia most commonly associated with digoxin toxicity. In case of post-tosatistic point, we see that the QRS complex interval will vary between the short, this, this interval is short, then long, then again short, this type of repetition can occur. Pathophysiology of Tossardis D. Pointy. A prolonged QT reflects prolonged myocyte repolarization due to ion channel manufacturing. The prolonged repolarization period also shows early depolarization or late uh, depolarization. So during Depolarization phase, there may be again depolarization. Early after depolarization may manifest on the ECG as tall U waves. If these reach threshold amplitude, they may manifest as premature ventricular contraction or PVC. Tosatis de pointy is initiated when a PVC occurs during the preceding T wave, also known as R on T phenomenon. The onset of Tosatis D point is often preceded by a sequence of short, long, short RR interval, so called pause dependent Tosatis D point e, with longer pauses associated with faster run of Tosatis D point. E. Treatment of Tosatis D point e, unsynchronized direct current cardioversion for ventricular fibrillation or correction of electrolyte imbalance particularly hypokalemia. Hypomagnesiamia is a predisposing factor. We need to correct it by bolus dose of magnesium sulfate followed by IV drip to raise the magnesium level to normal. And treatment of underlying causes may be necessary. Sometimes isoprenaline injection may be necessary. If it turns into ventricular fibrillation, then the defibrillation may be required. So whenever there is cardiac arrest arising from this type of malignant arrhythmia, we will have to follow the advanced cardiac life, life support. We will have to start CPR and if the rhythm is shockable, for example, ventricular fibrillation or tosatis de pointy or polymorphic VT giving rise to pulseless VT, uh, in that case, uh, we'll have to apply DC shock in a uh, in a uh, gradually increased fashion. If the rhythm is non-shockable, it may be due to normal uh, bring uh, return of normal rhythm, or it may be due to cardiac asystole. If there is cardiac asystole, in that case, we will have to make it shockable, uh, turn it into shockable rhythm by using noradrenaline or also atropine, then when it turns into shockable rhythm, we'll use defibrillation. Meanwhile, we'll continue with CPR, uh, CPR, and we should not stop CPR for more than 10 seconds in any episode to check for pulses and other things. So we'll continue to follow the ACLS algorithm to uh, bring this back uh, patient back to life. The cardiac arrest may be due to pulseless ventricular tachycardia as a sequelae of tosatis de pointy or ventricular fibrillation or cardiac asystole. So this is all about in brief, this is all about the uh, cardiac arrhythmia and, the, and its management. You will have to go into detail uh, have to go into a uh, textbook and uh, so that you can have a knowledge about the arrhythmia and its management. So it's a difficult chapter, but you will have to go through uh, very vividly and painstakingly so that you can have the idea about the arrhythmia. Now it has been 
a specialty. For example, some electrophysiologists are there who actually specializes on this subject and manages arrhythmia. Particularly, all interventional arrangements are done by them. So, with this, I conclude. Thank you very much for patient hearing.